I'm just uh, starting my 2023 winter vacation. This is my first stop. This is Fort Clinch State Park. I'm at the Riverside Camping Loop. They actually have two camping loops here, one beach side and one riverside. I've been coming here for years and I actually like the this riverside camping loop better especially when it's warm out or hot out um, because you get a lot of shade it really helps keep the camper cooler uh, this is january so it's it's pretty cool out um, don't really have to worry about that but i, I still like it here better um, Probably because the campsites are spread out a little bit more. I'll take you over to see the uh, beach camping loop, but those campsites are really close together. There's no trees or vegetation in between the campsites, so not a lot of privacy there. But some people love it over there. We tried it one year and just we roasted. Uh, the one time and the other time it was really windy. I couldn't even put the awning out um, But like I said some people really like that I have one guy that was um, Staying in the campsite next to mine and he said he loves the wind <laughs> I didn't Anyway, this is campsite number 22 I Haven't stayed in this campsite before but so far I really like it. It's it's nice and the main reason is because of what I call your front yard, where you spend most of your time, which is out the door of your camper. And this campsite has a big front yard. Plenty of space. If you got a separate awning, you want to set up canopy that you want to set up plenty of room for that um, it plus there's not a campsite on this side of your camper so you're all by yourself over here which I really like now I didn't set up anything so I'm not gonna be here for that long and tomorrow night it's supposed to rain and uh, the day after that Let's see, tomorrow night. Yeah, the day after that, I'll be leaving, so I don't want to have to dry everything out or put everything up wet. So, I'm, I'm comfortable enough just without setting everything up. You know, I, I made a lot of pre-made food, so I'm all set there. So, I'm just going to leave it like this, this time. Usually I set everything up, though. All right, I'll take you out to see this loop. All right, hope this is steady enough. This is the road coming into the camping loop. This is where the road comes out at. This is where the campsites start on the right. Dump station on the left. RVs in here all in the woods there's 22 where I'm at so far nice campsite more campsites more campsites as you can see lots and lots of trees and shade which to me is important during the summer it's super hot out. Handicap one with everything concrete. And on the right is the air conditioned and heated bathrooms. Road is paved over here. 
very nice spacing. There's the old bathroom there. Nice spacing on the campsites. I stayed in this one time going to Disney World. I had the Airstream hooked up. And I only stayed one night. It was so long that I didn't even have to... The campsite was so long I didn't even have to unhook. I just backed in there. And uh, next morning got up. Continued going to Disney World. This is probably the most camp popular campsite right there. Because you got river view from that campsite. This is the river over here. really popular campsite I stayed there when was it two years ago in January and it, it was so windy in that campsite that I was freezing and that was the only campsite that was getting hit by the wind see it's right there Beautiful campsite, but if it's windy, the wind's coming off this river, you're going to feel it. And I rode through the rest of the campground, the camping loop. Nobody else had the wind like I did at that campsite. There's a little area over here. Nature trail right there to take my dog on that trail every night, every morning for a walk. And here's an amphitheater over here. Put on informative shows over there. And some more of the river. Fish cleaning station out there. So let's see, it's a little windy out here this morning. You might be hearing that. You feel every bit of that wind in this campsite right there. This is a nice one over here. Now this is on the back side of the camping loop. There's the old restrooms. And as you can see, the road turns into a dirt road. So, some very nice big campsites here. There's the bathroom, the back side of it. It's a newer bathroom, very clean. Like I said, air conditioned and heated. That's a campsite there. We've stayed there before. It's a nice one. I think the total number of campsites here is 50 something, if I'm not mistaken. So there's not a lot of them. Does it get really crowded in here? Because of that, it is a popular state park, and on the weekends, people come here for the beach, fishing, and to see the fort. And I'll show you the fort also. Some more campsites. This one here, 53, we stayed at last March. Me and Grant did. Another really nice campsite. Nice and level. And that's the end of that loop.
Now let's go check out the beach loop. Forgot to mention when I was down by the river earlier. See, that's a good campsite right there. It has a view of the river. But in the evening, you can come and watch the sunset over the river. As you can see, there's always people that come down here and watch it. But you can go down to the beach on the Atlantic side, watch the sunrise in the morning. In the evening, you can come over here and watch the sun set over the river. Nice and quiet out here this evening. Not too breezy. There's that fish cleaning station right there. I watched the sunset from there last night. And that's where the guy had all those sea trout and a sheep's head. And uh, it was a huge top secret place that he caught him at because he didn't want to answer any questions about his fish. A few clouds tonight so the sun is setting behind the clouds. Still is really nice. Over there you got a paper mill. That's towards the town of Fredonia, Fredonia, Fernandino Beach. Not too shabby. Nice ending for a really nice day weather-wise here. It's nice and warm, sunny, like upper 70s. Really nice day. Fortunately, that's changing. Tonight, rain, <laughs> and then turns colder tomorrow. I think the highs are, I don't know, 50s, maybe 60 and windy all right I'll talk to you later okay here we are coming into the beach camping loop again I'm gonna be on my bike so hopefully it's steady enough where you can see everything just wait for a car truck to go by Five miles an hour long here, so at least it'll get slow. Alright, here we go. First off, on the left are the tent sites. They're actually pretty nice tent sites. And usually these are the ones that are only available on at the last minute because of course this place stays book solid year round pretty much Number one here used to be the camp post, but it looks like they've 
switch it to another site. I'll show you that one. There's the newer bathroom. Air conditioned and heated. Very nice. There's the site. As you can see, not much vegetation. Well, there's some behind the camp sites, but in between, there's nothing. There's beach access. And of course, that's the good thing about this camping loop, is you have walking access to the beach. It wouldn't be too bad this time of year. I can feel the wind a little bit here, but it's not too bad today. But there's nothing to break the wind. Some open campsites, that's surprising. Well, probably people just left because it's uh, I don't know, about 11 o'clock in the morning. People leaving today leave about this time. I believe this site here, right here, is the new host site because I, I think that'd be the best site here. There's nobody in your front yard at all. Of course, the dump station is right there but it's not too bad it's quite a distance away and that's it for the beach loop years ago uh, Grant and I stayed there on what I call an adventure trip we didn't have reservations anywhere except for the very first night we stayed in South Carolina somewhere I can't remember where is at a uh, state park there and then we just made reservations as as we went this was the first place that I found Grant was five years old and uh, we fell in love with the place a beautiful campground nobody knew about it it was easy for me to get a campsite the night before so it's almost impossible to do now. So uh, we've been coming back every year since. Last time we were here together was last year in March for spring break. Now old Granty's in college. Oop, wind's kicking up. Probably won't be able to hear me. So I'm gonna take you down to the beach. on the beach entrance to the parking lot pretty good sized parking lot one boardwalk is closed not sure why but they have a second one down here being a weekday and a little bit cooler out actually you know it's supposed to get upper 70s today but it's not like during the summer where it's hot people want to be at the beach so it's not really crowded here right now here's the other beach access and I'll show you the beach when I get there. I just came up this boardwalk here. And this is where the boardwalk ends right now. But there's the ocean. Well, that's the inlet side. It's the inlet side here. And then there's a jetty. On the other side of the jetty is the Atlantic Ocean. But this boardwalk used to continue out and 
was a fishing pier there that ran parallel with that jetty out there. It was the longest concrete fishing pier on the East Coast. It was, if I remember right, it was a half mile long. It took forever to get out there. Me and Grant came up this boardwalk many times with all our fishing gear and walked out there. And we had a lot of fun fishing on that uh, fishing pier. One of the, well, the very first time we were here, there was nobody on that fishing pier. It was me, Grant, and one other guy. He was from Charlotte, North Carolina. He said he came here on vacation one year and he loved it so much. He went home, packed everything up, and moved down here. This is the inlet side here. And then over there is the beach camping loop right there. You can catch some, catch some fish out here, usually during the summer. I don't see many people fishing out here during the winter. Although I did see a guy last night had a bunch of sea trout and one sheep's head. He didn't want to talk about them. It was a well-kept secret. <laughs> and so... I don't know what he was catching them on, where he caught them or anything. But not too bad out here. All right, let's go to the fort. Uh, I forgot to tell you, <clears throat> this area around here, this is coming up the boardwalk, going towards the beach. But all this area right in here is usually loaded with deer, rabbits. Sometimes you see a gopher turtle in there. Usually in the mornings and the evening, there's the ocean over there. Same with this side. Usually always loaded up with deer. Lots of deer in this park. Matter of fact, I was here yesterday morning and saw a deer right over there. He let me get pretty close before he took off. Just thought I'd mention that. All right, here we are approaching the fort parking lot. And right here is a nice mountain bike trail. You can also hike it. It's pretty nice. You have parking over here for beach access. That's on the east side of the inlet. Let me go over here because there's a car coming. Hopefully you can hear me because it's kind of windy out. This is the entrance to the port right here. It's also a um, camp store. They have some camping supplies in there and uh, some snacks. They used to have a place where they could make you stuff. <laughs> it's been closed for a while since COVID, but uh, I think they could make hamburgers and hot dogs or something like that. I don't I don't remember. We've never gotten anything off that grill. Um, this fort, you can't really see it. Let me see if I can go over here. Let's see if I can see the fort a little bit better. Oh, here we go. Hello. Anyway, there's the fort. Oops, sorry about that. There's the fort back over there. Very well restored fort. It's very nice. It's in great condition. 
they did a great job of uh, restoring it and last time we went in I think it was last year it was two dollars again and well worth it it's right on the inlet so it's pretty cool to see it's well worth going in there if you visit this park all right so that is the fort let me just show you a few other things Access to the beach. Got a car parking there on the west side, the inlet. And <clears throat> let's see if I can make it up this hill in the gear I'm in. But this is a shortcut back to the campground. Very nice playground in here for the kids. Picnic area. And parking to use the picnic and playground area. Go up through here. And this is the road here that leads back to the Riverside camping loop, the one that I'm in. Back in my campsite. That's the tour of Fort Clinch. And uh, overall, real nice campground. Um, very comfortable here. It's got all the sites have water and electric, no sewer. Of course, there's dump stations. Um, but, you know, I, we would stop here. Every time we'd come to Florida, we'd stop here. So, like I said, we've been coming here every year since we discovered this place, which was uh, 14 years ago. Um, it's got some nice mountain bike trails, walking trails. Of course, it's got the beach and the river access. It's got the fort here. The downtown Fernandino Beach is really really nice it's a small town and it has shops and restaurants there and a marina very nice area that's why it's so popular now as soon as people discovered it it was one of the fastest growing areas there there is uh, so now it's crowded but I think I might go downtown a little later on today, go to that marina. I like that marina. It got destroyed by a hurricane and they had to rebuild it. So I want to see what it looks like now. But uh, like I was saying earlier, it's supposed to rain tonight through tomorrow morning. And then I think I said I was going to be here one day after that. That's going to be two days. And then I go to the next campground and stay there just a short period at that campground, too. So, but anyway, this is Fort Clinch.